Hi everyone, my name is Eric Richardson. In today's video, we'll walk through how to set up local Windows users in Access Camera Station Pro. Now, user management might not be the most exciting topic, but if it's not done properly from the beginning, it can lead to all kinds of issues later on. Think login errors or worse, users getting admin access when they shouldn't. We'll look at when it makes sense to use local users, how to create them, especially as your system scales or spans multiple servers. Local users are best suited for small standalone systems, usually with just one or two servers and a limited number of users. Quick to set up and don't require a domain, which makes them ideal for temporary setups or fast deployments. But as soon as the system starts to grow, especially across multiple servers or locations, things get tricky. If a user needs to access to more than one server, you need to manually create the exact same user account on each server. That means identical usernames and passwords everywhere. It's doable, but as the number of users or servers increase, so does the risk of errors. The upside, it's simple, fast, and doesn't depend on a domain. But the downside is clear, no central management, more work as you grow, and it becomes harder to track or remove access. So while local users work fine for smaller setups, they're not the best option in larger or long-term environments. To create a local user on the Windows machine where Access Camera Station Pro is installed, you can right-click on the Windows Start button on either Windows 11 or Windows 10, and then click Computer Management. From here, we'll go to Local Users and Groups, and then to Users. To create a new user, right click and select new user and then enter in the username and password. Then enter in their secure password. So once we've created the username and password, it's important to uncheck user must change password at next login. This is especially important for remote or service accounts since it can block access completely. If the account is for ongoing system access, it's also a good idea to check password never expires. The user you create never needs to log in directly on the server. As long as the account exists in Windows and is added in Access Camera Station Pro, they can log in from any other machine using the Access Camera Station Windows client, web client, or mobile app without ever physically touching the server. So once we're happy here, we can then go ahead and click Create. If we want to create more accounts, we can do so here. Otherwise, we can click Close. All right, so once we created the local user in Windows and made sure the key settings are correct, the next step is to bring that user into Access Camera Station Pro and assign the right permissions. So let's take a look at how to do that. Now let's open Access Camera Station Pro. Once open, we can go to configuration. We can do so by clicking the plus tab and then going down to configuration. We'll go to security and then to user permissions. To add a user, we'll go to the add button and we can search for the new user that we've just created. Highlight the user and then click add. We can now assign the appropriate role, viewer, operator, or administrator, based on the level of access that this user needs. So roles define what a user can do. For example, a viewer can only view live view and recorded video. An operator can control PDZ cameras and acknowledge alarms, and an administrator has full access to all settings and configurations. In this case, we want this to be a viewer. After assigning the role, we can now switch to the user permissions part to fine tune access. Here you can grant access to specific cameras, camera groups, or views. Rather than giving access to everything, this is especially useful when different users need access to different parts of the system. 
And as you can see, there are other tabs that allow you to assign different permissions to different features or the different roles. So once we're happy with those permissions, we can then go ahead and press save and then apply. So once the permissions have been configured, it's a good idea to test the new user account. So we can log in from a separate client machine, or in this case, we can log in from this client. And we just want to make sure that the user can access the intended cameras, views, and functions. This helps confirm that the role and permissions were set correctly. So to do so, we'll select the hamburger menu and we'll log out. We want to log into this server and we want to select the user that we've just created. So we'll untick login as current user. And we'll go ahead and enter in the new user's username and password. So as you can see, once we've logged in, this specific user has the viewer role. They can only change client settings that affect this specific client. So we can have a look at client settings, user settings, and streaming. Now the cameras that this user has permissions to view were selected previously, and we can see that these four cameras have been selected and this specific view. So this correlates to the permissions that we gave them previously. So if everything looks good and the user can access what they need, great. But if something's not working as expected, double check the assigned roles and make sure the user has permissions to the correct cameras and views. So now that we've covered local users, let's wrap things up. So local users work well for small systems with one or two servers. But once your system grows, managing access manually becomes a real challenge and a potential risk. In the next video, we'll show you how to set up a domain user using Active Directory, which is a much better solution for scalable multi-site environments. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.